we have about 30 minutes to go. Uh, we'll talk about locks. The reason for a chest drawer that had locks in 1850 was to provide storage for valuables to keep it secure. Drawers were not meant to be locked, but although expensive, locks were essential. Locks were screwed or nailed into mortises. New replacement locks rarely fit these mortises, and therefore change is well apparent if you remove the lock and look internally. All period drawers had escutcheons surrounding the keyhole to protect the wood and decorate the facade. In the beginning, they did not generally match the pulls, but with the advent of the Queen Anne style, all hardware began to be made en suite. In the 19th century, casters were the rage. They were repeatedly added to older period furniture. Some in this time even cut half and the ball and claw foot and installed a caster. This type of mayhem devalued many of the objects in question. Casters date on British furniture 1745 and on, and on American furniture approximately 1785, just nearly a half a century difference. Look for filled or holes under the feet of cases, tables, or chairs to see evidence if that casters were present. Glass. Old glass is good evidence of age and authenticity. When wet, whether blown or cast, old glass is slightly tinted and contains many imperfections. Perfectly smooth, smooth glass was not perfected until the mid to late or the third quarter of the 19th century. Never gauge the age of glass by the conditioning of the silvering in a mirror. Period glass is held in by glazer's putty or plaster of Paris. Old glass is extremely brittle. Even if the glass is new, the furniture may still be old. Cabinetry. The dovetailing joint locks the end of one board to the end of another by fitting a row of fan shaped on the one into a row of identical notches on the other. Each row of dovetails is individually made and mated. With the cabinet maker using his finished dovetail tenons as a model for cutting the matching notches. Original dovetail cutting resulted in overcutting. When checking for original matching or added drawers, examine and compare the style, length, and width of overcut kerf. Before examining the back and underside of a case, remove all of the drawers. Take each drawer out and turn it over. This reveals a lot, particularly re with regards to unfinished pieces. Many fakers of the past paid little attention to the undersides. This is a good indicator or judge of other unfinished secondary surfaces for texture and color. Be very conscious of finished or refinished undersides, backs, and or interiors. This screams possible case bastardization or at best a reworked area using fraudulently used boards. While others under there look for unnatural alterations especially feet. Although turned feet are doweled into the bottom, many feet are glued to the underside. Because the cabinet maker shaped bracket feet after he put them on and then they're blocking in place, both the bracket and its support should bear the same saw cuts and overcuts and rasp marks. A variation in wood color betrays support blocks of various ages. Stain blocks are replacements. Looking at wood color and at rasp marks, even a rookie spots replace supports and new feet. New feet substantially reduce the value of a piece. Many times a upper and lower case of a double cased lead a second separate life the upper and lower case of many high chests have been separated and have the two cases of some chest on chest. Almost every time one of these hits the street, it does incognito. Lower cases of chest on chest 
and upper, upper cases pose as chest of drawers. Lower cases of chest pretend to be dressing tables. Dressing tables tend to be narrower, measuring about 32 to 36 inches. A dressing table that is 41 inches wide is a reborn high chest base. When determining if a case is leading a double life, scrutiny of the facade is paramount. The facade of the upper case of a high chest usually looks like what is really is even the, that the case is posing as a low chest of drawers. Another indicator is the top. Scrutinize the top. The surface to pass as a dressing table. The lower case of a high chest needs to be fitted with a top. Most new tops are not up to the job. Typically, period tops were finished as grandly as the facades. If the drawer front is were, and were veneered, the top should be of similar style, design, and or material. The flat top of the upper case of a high chest is even more revealing. It closely resembles the bottoms of dovetail cases. The top of a high chest or of a chest on chest is well above eye level. So the board is not a primary wood and was left unfinished, even platonizing its entire existence because the top was not meant to show the dovetails binding it to the sides of the upper case as they are exposed. The cornice moldings surrounding the top are usually flush with the surface of the top. In contrast, the tops of chest of drawers were table height or a bit not higher and were meant to be seen and used as table surfaces. Such tops are finished primary wood. The top usually overhangs the case in sides and front. And there are to be moldings beneath the overhang, but are very rarely are moldings merely attached to the edge without concern for the appearance from above. When the top of, ch of a chest is of secondary wood and has exposed dovetails, be very, very skeptical. Once you become skeptical, discovering the true nature of a high chest top in disguise can be amazingly easy. Sometimes a redone case even has a long hidden drawer in the cornice of the molding. The undersides of reborn upper cases reveal little. After all, during the years when the upper case was on its lower case, its bottom board was not exposed to air and did not darken. In a chest of drawers that resembles a high chest upper case, look to the top for a reliable story. Tops on Boston area chests join the case sides with a sliding single dovetail visible from the back. A Rhode Island chest, however, has two tops in reality. A frame completing top, often of two boards, joined to the sides by locking rows of dovetails, and a topmost surface secured to the case by moldings glue blocks, and often butterfly keys. When investigating the backs of cases, look for telltale modern saw marks on the lower edges of the high chest or dressing table backboards. That small and barely visible surface is most likely the one to spot the faker neglected. The inside of cases which are unfinished surfaces also bear much inf informative maker's marks of the craftsman at work and reveals marks of wear. Feel the inside surfaces. Beware the top, sides, or back whose inner surfaces are smooth and finished. Within cases with more than one drawer and, and a tier, the cabinet maker inserted vertical partitions and the, and the scored lines with which he located the mortise should be or mandatorily will be visible on the inside of the back. Wherever drawers make contact with the case, the investigator looks for wear. Some drawers run on central supports and most on their edges, sliding on strips that are nailed to the case. 
always checked on the inside of cases. For wear, replaced drawer supports are a minor loss but may indicate even greater alterations. At times, these have been turned upside down in order to have a clean bearing surface. Check all drawers in a case for uniformity in wood, color, and construction for local damage. A faker's favorite for suggesting age was random ink stains. Ink stains are logical on the desk, but out of place in, for example, a dressing table. On a desk, the feet and lid are likely to be a problem. The front desk lids were, were usually made of one board with edges with cleats whose grain runs the opposite direction of that of the board itself. Desk lids often break just beyond the hinges. Two boards lids are probably ones have had repairs. The new piece, the one at the hinge. To discern replaced lids, check the hinges. At the replaced hinge, the piece repaired on both sides should show a shared history. But desk can have major problems or enhanced or entirely replaced interiors or the marriage of a bookcase to a desk. So check the consistency of wood, the width of the top as it sits on the desk bottom and for also for color and craftsmanship. A desk made to have a bookcase on top board has an unfinished wood underneath, exposed dovetails at each end, and nail hole evidence of a mid-molding around the front of the sides. The wood, however, should be the same on bookcase and desk, and small drawers should be similarly constructed, and the contour of the moldings should all match perfectly. It is not sufficient to justify misconsistencies by merely dubbing them curious. Too many people, including just about everyone selling a married piece, justly, um, justly oddities with ease. They try to justify these oddities with ease. The cautious collector views the curious skeptically and demands proof of innocence. Where there is one inconsistency, look for more. Here, you quickly find more to call curious. The dovetailing of 19th century pieces is generally more delicate and even than that of almost 18th century counterparts. Hidden surfaces are better finished. Drawer bottoms are often secured with a series of small nail blocks and glue blocks. The nails are cut nails of more and more of them used. Dating most federal neoclassical and machine era cases to the 19th century is easy. Just don't ask when in the 19th century. Also, dowel joints belong to the late 19th century and early 20th century, as do wire nails and gimlet pointed screws. With regards to Turner's chairs, expect stretchers to be parallel to the floor and regard regarded stretchers that are not parallel as indicative of uneven wear to front to back in the sliding of the chair feet. Look for a relationship between the turnings on the front and rear post. In the period when the turner turned unseasoned wood, cuts would be made easily and as deep as he desired with one motion opposed to turning seasoned wood at a much higher speed, which was ridged and would fight back, resulting in not gentle tool, tool graining, as with a green gut, green wood, but creating tear outs and breakouts and chips. So tear outs and breakouts of chips are going to be high speed and harder seasoned wood of late 19th century. Many Turner's style chairs with rush or cane seats have at a later date been upholstered over the rail. To check the age of a rushed or caned chair, peek beneath the rush or cane directly onto the rail. It should be unfinished with a somewhat blade shape and out of a strong cheap wood such as ash. Expect the rail to become slightly fluted due to the rush or caning pulling in the unseasoned rail when new. 
with Chippendale and Queen Anne chairs stand back and from cabriole furniture and compare the legs. Because of templates, all the splats on the several chairs in a set should match. If one does not, either the splat has been replaced or the set is made up. Do not let your eye infer symmetry or exact replication where the craftsman did not impose it. Where templates would impose symmetry and exact replication on a cabriole leg and its counterpart, or on the several splats of the same set. Demand mirror images and carbon copies. Where templates tended to allow and to perpetuate asymmetry on the opposite sides of one splat, expect and accept it. Another oddity in chairs is that the rear seat rail is set higher than the side. Typically, they are of the same level. Many times in Chippendale Queen Anne chairs, rails, tenons are, and single pe are single pegged into the post. Double pinning appears to be overbuilding. Pinning a splat in the crest rail or shoe is unnecessary and will not allow movement of the splat. Stay clear of bird carvings of the 1920s and 30s. That is recarving of the hand hold of a chair or a bird's head or carving of a foot into bird talons. Upholstered chairs and sofas should be examined in a state of undress. Either stripped to the frame, is no original upholstery survives, or stripped of what remains of the original fabric. Strip away all reupholstery, examine the entire frame. Accepting only the parts covered by original upholstery. The old frame tells a story. Old wood look, looks old and many nail holes and new wood looks new. Added wood, many upholsters add reinforcements or rails or styles to help in reupholstering. It's not a deficit. Replaced or missing elements are filled nail holes and glued and cloth wrapped rails are common. Inappropriate corner blocks can also corner or find a fake. 18th century craftsmen in certain cities used certain shapes for their blocks. So the style of the block should be with the style of the chair.